Welcome to Weekly Digest, where we highlight the works of ministers of government as they push the administration's development agenda. Another 424 Guyanese have received scholarships from the Ministry of Public Service to complete their tertiary education. Minister of Public Service Sonia Parag explained that the program aims to empower Guyanese with the necessary skills and qualifications to excel in their chosen fields. The areas that we have advertised for scholarships have been selected by the ministry based on an unofficial needs assessment that was done with the various ministries and agencies in the public service to identify areas within which they want to build on their human resource capacity. One of the mandates of the Ministry of Public Service is to provide the human resource capacity for the public sector. Minister Parag has firmly denounced Venezuela's persistent and baseless territorial claims, emphasizing the potential for these claims to undermine the foundations of democracy, diplomacy, and harmonious relations within the region. The minister was at the time addressing a public awareness conference on the Guyana-Venezuela border controversy at the Artichon Conference Center on Tuesday. An act like that puts the entire world in limbo. It puts the entire world in a state of confusion, or it has the potential to do that. Why? Because any country in any part of the world can decide that they're going to wake up tomorrow and they're going to say, a piece of your land belongs to me. And I don't have to adhere to what court order or decision from a tribunal was made. Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony on Monday stressed that now is not the time for Guyanese to hide their patriotism. Minister Anthony made the call in the boardroom of the Ministry Secretariat on Breakdown when he delivered the feature address at the organization's National Awareness Session, which was aimed at enlightening health care workers on the border controversy. So we as Guyanese, this is our country, this is our territory, each one of us, we have to make sure that we defend this territory. And one way of doing that is to be very clear about the history. The Ministry of Labor has effectively utilized 91% of its budgetary allocation to address the labor shortage in 2023 through capital programs, policy development, and administration. 79% of the expenditure focused on capital programs prioritizing the construction and renovation of facilities. The remaining capital programs are expected to be completed before the first quarter of next year. The capital side, uh, we are at 36%, and that is so because we have the projects, which is uh, the capital projects happening, and that will end up being rollover projects because the construction uh, some are to finish in January and some are to finish in uh, February. Minister of Labor Joseph Hamilton said the government of Guyana is clear where the boundary of Guyana starts and culminates in relation to the Essequibo region. He articulated that the conversation about the controversy with Venezuela must be projected in a unified and purposeful way. Venezuela has a controversy, <laughs> not with us so much, <laughs> but with the procedure. And that is the issue. Our position as articulated is we want peace with all our neighbors. We want the Caribbean to, be, to continue to be a zone of peace. And that is the reason why the government of Guyana, we have proceeded to deal with this matter via the rule of law. We are proceeding as a peaceful country operates. We are proceeding as a country who recognize, as they say, somewhere this also shall pass. Over 30 business representatives from Region 9 participated in the Ministry of Labor Seminar on Working Conditions, Occupational Safety and Health, OSH, Regulations, Technical and Vocational Education and Training, TVET, Opportunities, Employment and Exchange Services. As business people, you have to ensure that your workers and yourself work in a safe environment. 
So if the environment is, un is, is unsafe, if it's not only detrimental to the employees, it's also detrimental to the employer because the employer will be in the same building. And how you deal with that is fundamental to the survival of businesses. The Ministry of Labor continues to execute rigorous training programs to empower persons to efficiently conduct safety and health inspections on floating production, storage and offload in FPSO vessels offshore Guyana. We have done some additional training uh, to develop um, other people and now we have moved from one to four. Um, so that's a plus. Minister of Home Affairs Robson Ben on Sunday highlighted the importance of unity and collaboration in upholding the nation's sovereignty. He made these remarks at a public show of solidarity held in Kingston, Georgetown. The event was organized by Guyanese Venezuelans living here to assert Guyana's territorial integrity, which includes the region of Essequibo. He reassured attendees that Venezuelans living in Guyana will continue to be treated with respect and dignity and that they are entitled to state protection. We view Venezuelans as our brothers and cousins. We, as a country, have always welcomed persons who are in distress. We have no reason to want to fight Venezuelans or even to disrespect Venezuelans. We are happy having a country with a low population to have people who will come to Guyana to work to increase our population, to help us develop Guyana together. Minister within the Ministry of Local Government, Anand Prasad, has urged that Guyanese remain vigilant and disregard any attempts to cause fear and apprehension amid the ongoing border controversy between Guyana and Venezuela. Speaking at an awareness session hosted in the ministry's compound on Monday, the minister emphasized that the government will continue to engage with the people to reassure them that every effort is being made to protect the country's sovereignty and territorial integrity. I just came back from Essequibo. Some people are scared with what they're seeing on Facebook. But all, or probably most of it, what they're seeing on Facebook, posted by others, are not factual. Villagers of Makumako Central Rupununi Region 9 will now meet and host activities in a comfortable and spacious environment following the commissioning of a meeting hall, which incorporates an indigenous banab and modern architecture constructed by the villagers themselves. I never expected this morning to come to here to Makumako to commission such an awesome meeting hall. A meeting hall that did not roll over into years to complete. A structure that is modern but still has the appeal of an indigenous Benham. Rupununi's vast savannas and its nature-based tourism products have the potential to position Guyana as a powerhouse in the tourism industry, thereby growing other sectors in the region and creating additional opportunities. This is according to Minister of Amerindian Affairs Pauline Sukai, who delivered the feature address at the opening of the 21st Rupununi Business and Investment Expo over the weekend at Tabatinga Sports Complex. Sukai, who delivered the feature address at the opening of the 21st Rupununi GRDB Laboratory at the Bon Intention, yes. delivering the feature address at the Sarita Mustafa, who noted the feature address at the Opic product. This year again, we have sorry at the bond intention. Bring the feature address at the certain, but more importantly, feature address at the open. That showed the Ghana Rice Developments Board (GRDB) laboratory at the Bon Intention, East Coast de Mararo, was on Wednesday recertified by the Ghana National Bureau of Standards (GNBS). Delivering the feature address at the certification ceremony was Minister of Agriculture Zufa Karmustafa, who noted that the lab will play a significant role in the development of the crop that contributes extensively to the country's gross domestic product. This year again, we have seen, or we will be seen at the end of this period, we will be seeing an increase in production from last year's production, but more importantly, we will be seeing that we will be achieving the targets that were set in our budget. That show that this 
institution, especially labs in GRDB, are playing a very important role because we know for a fact that without lab and testing and experimenting, we would not have good yield. Senior Finance Minister Dr. Ashni Singh has denounced Venezuela's threat to Guyana's sovereignty and territorial integrity, deeming it as an act of provocation. It has long been established that Guyana comprises Essequibo, Demerara, and Barbies. That has long been established. We have an extremely strong case before the ICJ. And we have every basis and reason to expect a favorable outcome. We reject completely this latest act of provocation by Venezuela. We reject it fulsomely. And we stand in firm solidarity in defense of our country. Minister of Public Works Bishop Juan Edgel has underscored that aviation safety is being assured through training, monitoring, and proper management. He was speaking during the National Aviation Safety Seminar hosted at the Pegasus Hotel on Monday. With all the growth and experience of Guyana, safety remains our number one priority. As Guyana continues to experience unprecedented growth, Minister within the Ministry of Public Works, Dudat Indar, has emphasized the increase in demand for human resources across various local sectors, given the surge in economic development. Because if you're going to build a country, you have to literally construct it from end to end. And as you construct it, you need the machinery. You need the materials, you need the manpower, and you need the money. You provide the machinery. So you're one part of the mix of the resources that is needed to build out any country. A mobile multipurpose shelter valued US $1.1 million was on Thursday handed over to the Civil Defense Commission, CDC, to run emergency operations and care for patients affected by potential disasters. The facility was presented through the United States Southern Command's Humanitarian Assistance Program in collaboration with Deployed Logics, a rapid deployment product manufacturer. Prime Minister Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips said the facility will enhance CDC's disaster preparedness and response capacity. I envisage the Civil Defense Commission working with the Ministry of Health utilizing this facility to bring humanitarian assistance especially to those far-flung areas of Guyana. We can deploy this facility in areas that don't have hospitals for a period of time, and then we can treat a number of people. In his address to 1,796 newly trained teachers, Prime Minister Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips underscored the government's unwavering commitment to fostering a dedicated, qualified, and passionate cadre of educators. Your choice to enter this noble profession is a testament to your belief in the power of education to transform lives. In a country where education is a top priority, your role as teachers is crucial to shaping the future of our nation. Minister of Housing and Water Colin Kroll on Thursday inspected infrastructure projects and new housing developments in Region 3. He explained that approximately 5,000 residential house lots were allocated in these housing schemes and individuals will begin accessing their land shortly. All persons in the Kindred can be shown their lot or they can have access to their lot. In terms of Metamirzorg, we are working with February to be able to start showing persons their lots and to be able to complete in March and similarly for Stewartville east and west to start in February to be completed uh, in, by March. So for Stewartville and Metamirzor, by the end of the fourth quarter, we can, persons can be able to be shown their lot as well to be able to access their lot. This brings us to the end of this edition of Weekly Digest. For these and other government-related stories, do log on to our website at dpi.gov.gy and our social media platforms as well. Goodbye. Thank you.